To accurately assess the developments and results of the Vietnam-China border war in 1999, please review part one carefully, making sure to understand the causes of the conflict. Part two will not go too deeply into specific developments, but will focus more on analyzing the strategic moves of both sides, also focusing on analyzing and assessing the gains and losses of the two sides after the war. Gunfire in the border sky. On the morning of February 17, 1999, Chinese troops officially landed in Vietnam. According to data measured from U.S. satellites, China deployed about 85,000 troops before increasing it to 400,000 with the ambition of using segregation tactics to quickly occupy the northern border provinces of our country. Vietnam has about 100,000 troops participating in the war, most of which are only local troops and militia, not regular troops as China propagates in the country. In this landing, China only used artillery and infantry. The decision may seem unusual on the surface, but on closer inspection looks like a carefully crafted move to shoot two enemies with one arrow. It helped them avoid failure on the battlefield and humiliation, while also avoiding confrontation with Vietnam's air defense. And secondly, reduce the Soviet Union's ability to enter the war quickly with its air force. Before the war, there was an interesting detail about General Secretary Le Duan's air defense strategy. Vietnam would have dismantled their defense strategy. Vietnam would have dismantled their defenses, if not for his precaution. To grasp the importance of this decision, consider that Chinese jets could fly from the border to Hanoi in only seven minutes. The destruction could have been much worse if Vietnam had not been prepared. On the ground, Deng Xiaoping realized that China needed to move quickly into Vietnam despite the loss of tens of thousands of soldiers' lives. He also understood that the Vietnamese had combat experience and home field advantage, making them challenging to defeat. Deng had limited time, as he believed the Soviet Union and the Vietnamese army would not give China much time. As a result, Chinese troops pushed forward despite the strong winds. Colonel Trigo Quang Dien, head of the wanted criminal police department in Lang Son province, recalled that even with poor shooting, Chinese soldiers were still being hit. Numerous Vietnamese veterans in interviews with Western journalists noted that the Chinese were outnumbered and did not value life as highly as the French and Americans. Many witnesses also recounted China's terrifying tactics during the war. The artillery advanced while bombarding with shells, followed by massive infantry movements. Once the infantry arrived, the artillery would fire behind them, preventing them from retreating. China's lack of training and skills, combined with their human wave tactics, resulted in significant casualties. At times, the Kimes the Kai Kung River was filled with mostly Chinese troops who perished while attempting to cross it. The authorities could not repatriate all of the soldiers' remains, so they had to stack them up and incinerate them in bulk. Vietnam relied mainly on local troops and militias, but their combat experience from two previous wars was still superior to China. Despite facing human wave tactics, the Vietnamese army predominantly employed guerrilla tactics, taking advantage of the mountainous terrain to halt advances and eliminate the enemy's strength. This fighting style allowed Vietnam to resist China with a smaller force. China's plan to occupy five northern provinces within a week was quickly thwarted. There were instances when a Vietnamese regiment's defensive position held up against a Chinese division for hours or even days. Many Chinese officers later referred to the war with Vietnam as the Ghost War or the Shadow War, or the Shadow War because fighting the Vietnamese army was no different from fighting their own shadow. Similarly, there were also many instances of Vietnamese Special Forces units striking and destroying China's difficult defenses in Guangxi and Yunnan. On March 6, 1979, China officially captured Lang Son and declared that it had opened the door to Hanoi and started preparing to withdraw its troops. The gateway to Hanoi is only about 15 to 20 kilometers from the border. According to most Western authors who commented on the war, Vietnam performed better on the battlefield and they pointed out some major problems with the Chinese military. Their tactics were outdated and remained unchanged since the World War II and Korean War. Communication were extremely poor and antiquated and the communication process was also outdated. Many sources also believe that the Chinese army used a map that was 75 years old during the war in Vietnam. Their logistics and communication systems were poor and outdated, still relying on animals with a lack of communication means and problematic transmission procedures.
During the Cultural Revolution, China's industry encountered difficulties, resulting in weapons that were not as advanced as the Vietnamese weapons supplied by the Soviet Union. Some authors pointed out that the capture of Lang Son could be a basis for China to penetrate deeper into Vietnamese territory, possibly reaching Hanoi. Of course, China's military action in Vietnam would result in casualties since Hanoi had deployed five defense units and 30,000 troops were returning to reinforce the area. The Xiao Ping Party made a wise decision not to move further south, and on March 16, 1979, Chinese troops withdrew to their country as heroes who taught Vietnam a lesson. China withdrew all its troops from Vietnam on March 16, 1979, after 29 days of intense attacks. On the way back home, they used the scorched earth policy to destroy the infrastructure of the northern provinces of Vietnam and employed psychological warfare to win the hearts of ethnic minorities in Vietnam and build the image of a friendly Chinese army. Villages, bridges, and roads in Lai, Shou, Kao Bang, Hai, Lang Son, and Quang Ninh provinces were destroyed. China had previously helped Vietnam build them, but now they are the ones destroying them. The buildings were once a symbol of solidarity between the two sides. The Chinese military provided aid to ethnic minorities who had received little attention from the Vietnamese government. They helped the villagers repair their war, damaged homes, returned to their gardens, and distributed rice and food. For a month, they shared cigarettes and lighters with the affected people of the bloody war. China's purpose in northern Vietnam is obscured by a friendly facade, but the reality is dire. Despite the haunting numbers and facts, neither Vietnam nor China has disclosed specific casualty numbers, with each side claiming numbers in their favor that are not truly reliable. China reports 7,000 soldier deaths and 15,000 wounded. However, Western sources estimate that these two numbers should be around 28,000 and 43,000, as assessed by the History Net. Vietnam is insistent that approximately 100,000 civilians were massacred by China. The actual number is estimated by military history now at 10,000 troops and 10,000 civilians. More haunting are perhaps the traumatic events. We have heard a lot, but each repetition brings indescribable emotions. Dong Dang Fortress became the mass graves of hundreds of people, most of whom were just civilians in Lang Son when the Chinese decided to slam the hatch, drop tear gas grenades, and spray deadly flames. Harm those who are fleeing or entrenched within. The massacre of 43 people, most of them old people, women and children by Chinese soldiers on the way back home. The incident happened in Tong Trop, Kao Bang City, and things are lost. After the border incident in 1979, Vietnam became increasingly pro-Soviet and hostile towards China. On one hand, Vietnam continued to receive aid and weapons from its allies in exchange for allowing the Soviet Union to use the ports of Da Nang and Cam Ranh and operate aircraft within its territory. On the other hand, Vietnam deployed 600,000 more equipped and trained troops to the northern provinces to build impregnable fortresses capable of blocking China's advance if a similar war broke out. The tense atmosphere continued for about 10 years, when the two sides still regularly bombarded and attacked each other. The Vietnamese border still seems to have never been silent. Tens of thousands of lives on both sides continued to be lost, In both sides continued to be lost in bloody clashes. So after all the lives and losses in the border war in 1979 in particular, and more than a decade of disputes and clashes between the two neighboring countries in general, what did Vietnam and China gain? On the Vietnamese side, first of all, most Western scholars agree that in the early war in 1979, Vietnam was the better side on the battlefield from combat strategy to discipline and effectiveness. Deng Xiaoping later also spoke harshly at the main military conference on March 16, 1979. This time, the weapons and troops were several times that of Vietnam. Fighting in Kao Bang was at least five against one or six fighting one. Fighting in Lang Son, Lao Cai are also several times, even six against one or seven against one. But our casualties are four times that of Vietnam. Our mythology has been destroyed. It can be said that to a certain extent that to a certain extent Vietnam has taught China a lesson. Unfortunately, this lesson is only encapsulated on the battlefield and is even more likely what Deng Xiaoping wanted to convey to the Vietnamese to wake up the Chinese army weary after the Cultural Revolution.
like one of the, some of the root causes of the war were mentioned in part one. On the contrary, in addition to showing a heroic image like young David against the giant Goliath, Vietnam has lost too much. First, tens of thousands of lives were lost, many of them innocent people. That pain seems to still be present through the stories and testimonies of living witnesses, despite more than 30 years since the two countries normalized bilateral relations. Secondly, the infrastructure was extensively damaged, forcing Vietnam to rebuild from the rubble of the war. The conflict had torn apart a nation that had just begun to recover, plunging it back into turmoil. This was an excruciating reality. Thirdly, Vietnam had to maintain a military force that was much larger than its economy could sustain for over a decade in case of a similar war. This indirectly hindered Vietnam's recovery and development momentum as planned by the Chinese leaders. On the Chinese side, let's analyze based on their purpose of waging war mentioned in part one. Despite the failure of short-term goals, first, it is impossible to force Vietnam to withdraw its troops from Cambodia. Although in fact, part of the main force of Vietnam here, although in fact, part of the main force of Vietnam here has also been sent home. Second, the paper tiger image in the area cannot be removed. Most Western scholars agree that the Chinese military still has many problems in terms of weapons, tactics, discipline. But in reality, China has succeeded in large and long-term goals according to the calculations of the Xi Jinping party. First, the success of containment has grown and the influence of Vietnam in the Indo-Chinese region. China's goal of slowing down Vietnam's development and weakening it has been largely achieved. Vietnam had to focus on maintaining its economy and military for more than a decade after the war before it was able to pursue economic reforms and modernization. Secondly, China succeeded in bringing the U.S. closer to its side in the struggle against Soviet influence. The Soviet Union's failure to provide sufficient support to its allies, as Deng Xiaoping had calculated, brought China two great advantages. The first was the support and closeness of the United States, which was crucial for China's economic renewal and opening up at the time. The second advantage was the elimination of the possibility of being attacked and pressured by both the U.S., Vietnam, and the Soviet Union. Now, the Vietnamese understand the meaning of being a distant country that cannot be saved, despite the military support guarantee signed with its close ally, the Soviet Union. Third, China succeeded in reforming its exhausted defense system after the influence of the Cultural Revolution. China began to open up in 1978, and after the war in 1979, the national defense began to be adjusted. Subsequent conflicts with Vietnam were mostly rehearsals for the ultimate aim of modernizing the country's military. China quickly learned from its defeat on the battlefield in 1979 to gradually overcome its inherent weaknesses. 43 years have passed since the painful days of 1979 and 30 years have passed since Vietnam and China officially normalized relations. A generation of young people has grown up in peace and stability that would have been unimaginable just a few years before they were born. However, gunfire still resounds on the border and the blood of Vietnamese people is still shed for this country. The painful past needs to be closed to make way for better things, but oblivion is unacceptable. Instead of ending, here's a TV program made by a German news agency about the Vietnam-China border war in 1979, posted on Facebook by Mr. Pham Gai Haiyan. You can find the clip in the article on the spiderroom.com website. The link to the article is in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to support us. And if you would like to learn more, please log on to spiderroom.com. I'm Donald Trump, and I will see you soon.